It's so easy to fall in love with my next guest, Gary Lord, and to fall in love with all of his great designs. Hey, Gary, how you doing? I'm great, thank you. Good. Okay, Gary, you brought the latest and greatest of your designs today I'm for fun. us. I love this pattern. This is awesome. This is so cool. I mean, it really looks like rust. It is. It's using actual steel paint that uses a rapid rust on it that makes that paint rust within 24 Get hours or less. Get out of here. Bam! Rust. Awesome. I love it. Cool. Okay. Take a peek, everybody. Pretty, pretty. Isn't this gorgeous? Love the shimmer. Love the rust. We're going to use luster stone, which has gives you that shimmer. Okay. And then we're going to use some of that rust steel paint that I talked to you about as well. Awesome. Well, let's get started. First off, you want to start with a black background. Of course, in your decor, you could change all these colors and make it be whatever works Who for you. Who would want it? It looks awesome. I know. I love these colors. So I'm going to take this material, and this is a brown suede. You can see that gorgeous color. Oh. And I'm going to put it on top of this stainless steel Yeah, trap. but I love that stuff because it's like whipped. It, has it like is. A nice it's fluffy, whip. isn't it? I yeah. agree. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it on and I'm going to scrape it off of the surface. So okay, you can I'm see I'm going that. all the way back down to the black and you can see all that black peeking through. All right. Not that I want to change the look you're kicking at all, but I'm just thinking you could even leave it with these little raised points, right? And you yep. could just do this step. Yep. We're talking well, sure. for the basic beginner at home. Absolutely. We can just do that step, Super right? Super easy to. Okay. So now you can take that though, and I am going to come back in and take your suggestion, and I'm going to add a little bit more material onto that ah, surface. By I'm so um, have less on here, but I'm just going to let it skip across that surface so it catches in some areas and not in others. And you can see how it sort of grabs and catches onto that surface. But now I see my low scraped area, and I have my higher dimensional area. All right, really quick. I don't want us to spend a lot That's of time okay. on it, but I want you just to briefly go over proper use of a trowel, okay, because half of the time, you know, people aren't sure and they, of how to use a tool properly, and they won't be able to create the same look unless they get that under control. Right, so to scrape it off, you put it on and then scrape at a 45 firm degree angle. Okay. When you want to load material onto the surface like I did here, you have to have a little bit on the blade, uh -huh. relatively even, and then with light pressure, keeping this leading edge up about a quarter of an inch off the surface, drag it real quick and it will catch in some areas, not in others. So it's really Perfect. pretty fast and easy. I'll show you on the next step because i got to do it all again anyway. All right, well, we're demoing on a board today for ease, but Gary does this right on the wall. So you can tackle this at home after you take it to the board. We always say that here. Take it to the board before you take it to your wall. So now I'm going to use the exact same material. It's green, though, this time. Oh, that's a great and color. And this is called Green Onyx. It is a beautiful color. I love that color. So now I'm going to show you that scraping. Okay. method again that we just talked about. So I have a little bit on my blade. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put it down. I'm going to trowel it. Now, that's how I could get it to be textured, but if I want to scrape more often, make it even, I just hold that at a 45 degree angle. I'll do it again. And do you experiment and, and see like, okay, do you want it to be 100% smooth? Do I want to skip some? Do I want to leave areas open? That's exactly right. And it's all done with pressure and amount of material on the tool. Okay. And so those two and combinations a good tool. and a good tool. Those two combinations or three combinations together will give you the texture that you want. Practice, of course, will get you to make it become perfect. Okay. But now, see how this is darker here? Mm -hmm. I may want to add a little bit more material in there. So now I'm tapping lightly. Listen how light that pressure is. And I can add more on. If I want to take it off, listen, and the pressure will be hard, and it will remove more. Scrape. Okay. So pressure is key on faux finishing. The lighter the pressure... Usually, the more materials left on to the surface. Now, can you overwork an area or no? Absolutely. Okay. But not really. I mean, food finishing has a lot of little nuances to it. So, you know, what happens is you can work on an area for a long time, but it's not cost effective. You don't okay. need to. So, usually, just do it and then move on to the next step. All right. And how big of a surface do they want to work in? Usually, like a two foot area? by two foot. And the more comfortable you come, you can expand that to a four foot by four foot. He's probably on like an 8 foot by 8 foot section now. Well, I'm up to 12 by 12. <laughs> oh, see? I, I, what I tell you. Leave okay. it to the pros. So anyway, now this, this is, is all dry. dry. Oh, so now I so want to take that Modelo. Okay. And well, this it is, is perfect design... as it is, though. Oh, it's gorgeous as it is. This is called a design masking film. Okay. And there's two parts to it. And I have to have the sticky part up. And you can see it says backing paper remove first. And it also says transfer tape remove last. Okay, so, slow and proof. We're not going to screw this up. We can exactly. Put this right there. Perfect. So now you peel this back at a 180 degree angle to itself. Yeah, being careful because we don't want to tear Making sure that it stays on the paper. 
flip it back over, get it into the placement wherever you want, and you can get these. This is good for one use, but you can buy 15, 20 of these. So they're know. relatively inexpensive. But the Right. And the nice thing about these is, is I can get a much more complicated pattern with this than I ever can with, with a, a stencil. With a regular stencil. Because right. there has all these areas that would fall out in a stencil, but they don't fall out with a Modelo. Yeah, but you're not going to have like the bleeding and things that you would typically have with your regular None. stencil. Is because it's got an adhesive backing. And this now, I will peel back, and I burnished it, if you watch. I burnish it so it makes it stay down to the surface. Right. And I peel this back again on itself, doing the exact same thing as I just did. And Being I'm careful. peeling at that 180 degree angle. And even if it comes up a little like that, you can push those back down into place. Okay. And that's why wow, you gotta be careful with firm. them. Yeah. And that's what will happen. So you got to watch as you release. Yeah, don't just go ripping it off. That's no, you got to be slow. very careful. Okay. So now I'm going to take some steel paint. This is actual steel metal inside of a vehicle, and I'm going to tap this and paint it onto my surface because this is going to rust. Now I can double this. Coat is what's going to create that gold look. This is what will create that gold look that you saw later on. So this is actually a steel paint. Now I could make this be even heavier amount. I could let that dry and put another coat on. Okay. But I'm also going to show you something else you can do. You can take this now and scrub. Now is that a dry brush? This is still has material on it, so it's a relatively dry brush. It's not fully right, but you loaded. you started with a dry brush. Right. It was okay. a dry brush to start with. And now I'm going to scrub that onto the surface, and I'm going to pat it off ever so slightly, vignetting out my edges to okay, soften my Okay, now there's hardly transition. any on there at all, but that's still going to do it? You'll be amazed how okay. much that rust. I'll do the same thing here real quick, and then I'll show you the rapid rust is what you do to spray it. Now, you can spray this rapid rust on, or you can sponge it on. You could brush it on. Okay. You want to do it when this paint is still wet. Okay. So you just mist it. Doesn't look like anything happens, but trust me, within hours, it will start to rust, sometimes even quicker than that. And then so you want to take that off, and then this is what it looks like after it's rusted. Awesome. And then this is the Modelo. You can see how those edges are softer. All right, let's reveal. Let me see, let me see. All right, so I just peel this up, and then I will take a little tool, and I will just pick at it and eventually remove all of those little images to create the final look. Oh, wow. That and is awesome. And so you awesome. just keep picking at it, and eventually, you know, you'll get all of these elements off. But you can get a much, much more elaborate pattern doing this kind of work than you can ever with I'm a I'm just going to pull our sample up really quick. Look how tight those lines are. Really nice. Lots of detail. Gary, you have done it again. Amazed me with this fabulous finish. Now you see why it's faux easy.